Welcome to a lesson on the division properties of exponents. Our first division property is a raised to the power of m divided by a raised to the power of n is equal to a raised to the power of m minus n. So this is telling us that if we're dividing and the bases are the same, we subtract the exponents. And when subtracting the exponents, it's always the exponent of the numerator minus the exponent of the denominator. And let's take a look at why this works. For example, let's say we wanted to simplify x to the fifth divided by x to the second without using this division property. We know x to the fifth is equal to five factors of x, and we know x squared is equal to two factors of x. Notice in this form, we would simplify the common factors between the numerator and denominator, where x divided by x is equal to one here as well as here. Notice how this leaves us with three factors of x in the numerator, which simplifies to x to the third. And now if we apply our division property to the same expression, we would have x to the fifth divided by x to the second is equal to x to the power of five minus two. So notice by subtracting the exponent of the denominator, we're simplifying out the common factors between the numerator and denominator, which gives us x to the third. However, it is important to recognize that notice how if the exponent in the denominator was larger than the exponent of the numerator, when we subtract, we would have a negative exponent, which we'll discuss in our next lesson. But if we add a negative exponent, notice how that means we'd have more factors in the denominator than the numerator. Looking at our first example here, we have x to the fiftieth divided by x to the fourth. We're dividing the bases of the same, so we subtract the exponents. And again, it's always going to be the exponent of the numerator minus the exponent of the denominator. So here we'd have x raised to the power of 50 minus four, which equals x to the power of 46. Next we have four a to the tenth b to the fifth divided by six a b squared. Remember the exponent on a here is one. So we'll simplify this in three steps. We'll first simplify the coefficient, then we'll simplify the a's, then we'll simplify the b's. Well notice four and six share a common factor of two. There are two twos in four and three twos in six. So the coefficients simplify to two thirds. And then we have a to the tenth divided by a to the first. That would be a raised to the power of 10 minus one. And then we have b to the fifth divided by b to the second. That would be b raised to the power of five minus two. So simplifying we have two thirds a to the ninth, b to the third. But I also want to mention this could also be expressed in a slightly different way. If we have two thirds, a to the ninth, b to the third, we could write the variables in fraction form with a denominator of one, and therefore we could also write this as a numerator of two, a to the ninth, b to the third, all over three. Both of these two expressions would be acceptable as a simplified expression. Our next property is raising a quotient to a power, where if we have the fraction a over b raised to the power of n, this is equal to a to the n divided by b to the n. Which means if we have this fraction, which means if we have a fraction raised to a power, we raise both the numerator and denominator to that power. So while this is given as a new property of exponents, it's really just an extension of the power to power property that we've already discussed. Where if you have a raised to the power of m raised to the power of n, we multiply the exponents. So looking at this property again, notice how inside the parentheses, we really have a to the first divided by b to the first. And both of these are being raised to the power of n, so we have powers to powers, and therefore we multiply the exponents. We have a raised to the power of one times n, which gives us a to the n. And we have b to the first raised to the power of n, which is equal to b to the power of one times n, giving us b to the n. So again, this is really just an extension of our power to power property we've already discussed. So looking at our examples, here we have five sevenths raised to the second, which I prefer to think of as five to the first divided by seven to the first raised to the second. So because we have powers to powers, we multiply the exponents. So we have five raised to the power of one times two or five squared divided by seven raised to the power of one times two or seven squared, 
but is equal to 25 forty ninths. Next we have x to the fifth divided by y to the third raised to the fourth. Notice how inside the parentheses the bases are not the same and therefore we cannot simplify inside the parentheses, but we do have powers to powers, so we multiply the exponents. So our numerator is going to be x raised to the power of five times four, and our denominator is going to be y raised to the power of three times four. So this simplifies to x to the twentieth divided by y to the twelfth. And once again, it's important to recognize this does not simplify. We do not subtract the exponents because the bases are not the same. In our last example, we have negative four t to the tenth divided by u to the sixth, all squared. We need to be careful here with this negative four. We can think of negative four as negative four raised to the first power. So again, because we have powers to powers, we multiply the exponents. So in our numerator, we would have negative four in parentheses raised to the power of one times two, or negative four squared. And then we'd have t raised to the power of 10 times two, that's t to the 20th. In our denominator, we have u raised to the power of six times two, which is u to the 12th. Simplifying, negative four squared is equal to negative four times negative four is 16. So we have 16 t to the 20th divided by u to the 12th. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.